Good morning here from uh, the COP26. We are at the Nordic Pavilion, the Nordic Ministers Council Pavilion, and we will talk about recirculation of nutrients. And we're going to focus on phosphorus today. Uh, we will meet several people from both uh, Denmark, Sweden, but also from Germany. And the focus is how we can create circular loops. Circularity and nutrients, well, it has been on the agenda here at the COP. And especially we have seen also from from the, the movie that was also broadcasted this summer uh, with Sir Richard Attenborough and Johan Rockström, Professor Johan Rockström, about the nine planetary boundaries. Uh, the film with the name Breaking Boundaries, The Science of a Planet, highlighted the challenge when it comes to how we can uh, reduce our carbon emissions. But what they stated in the end of the film was the importance of creating circular material loops, not only to reduce the carbon emissions so that we are fulfilled the ambitions in the Paris Agreement, but also to make sure that all other uh, planetary boundaries uh, we can uh, avoid to overshoot. So creating circular loops are critical. And one of the most critical ones are the phosphorus and the nitrogen cycle. We have past week, uh, the first week at the COP, been focusing on the nitrogen cycle. But today we're focusing on the, on, the, on the phosphorus cycle. So therefore I'm very glad here now to introduce you to the CEO of Easy Mining. Easy Mining is Rang Cell's uh, innovation company uh, that are developing solutions for a future circle economy, meaning that we will create uh, loops for uh, potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. So I hand over directly to the CEO of Easy Mining, Jan Sverd. So please take the stage. Thank you, Per. Uh, yes, so phosphorus is one of these really key raw materials that exists. And it's uh, really needed, you know, it's part of our DNA. And if we don't eat it, we actually die. So it's a key raw material. Uh, but of course, it's... Uh, also issues, it's uh, not really globally well sp spread. It's in a few places where the raw material exists in, in the mines. Uh, it also means that, of course, a lot of shipping has to be done. It is uh, because it's evenly used, you know, uh, food production is all over. And if you wouldn't have phosphorus, of course, food production would good men go down tremendously, and some say even 50%. So very key material, unevenly spread, a lot of shipments, uh, and then uh, to mine it and take it out of the soil and, um, and the earth, then it's a very energy intensive process also to process the phosphorus to final products. Uh, and maybe the third one is that when it's mined, it contains several contaminants like uh, cadmium, fluorine, and even uranium. So very important, but very also uh, a perfect match for recycling, of course. And. Uh, so that's what we have built up. We built up a system we call Ash to Foss to recycle phosphorus. It's a, it's a decontamination process and it's producing a very, very pure uh, calcium phosphate that is uh, uh, as good as the very best and better than the ones uh, products today on the market for animal feed. Uh, and of course, the starting point is that you have a sludge from a wastewater treatment plant. So you will hear about this uh, later today. Uh, but then it's produced in ash, which you concentrate it a bit, takes away organic contaminants, and uh, then we process it further to take away the last pieces of metal and so on. On top of the phosphorus product that is produced in this process, we also take out aluminum, we take out iron, that is then reused in wastewater treatment plants. And it's also a sand, a silica sand, that's a very good raw material for uh, cement or even concrete. Um, so that's the background to our project, Per. And as I understand it also that uh, your solution, if, and you need to correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, you are producing a phosphorus that has a higher quality than any other product that are produced today, is that correct? Yes, absolutely. So we take out uh, 96 to 100% of the contaminants in the ash, and then what's left is this very, very pure uh, calcium phosphate. So uh, better than the best that is on the market today. Good, we come back to that later. Uh, even if the, is of the best quality in the world, uh, we do have a problem. 
uh, and uh, here we come to many countries uh, around the world where legislation are dependent on origin and not quality. So it means that if it has been defined as something called waste, then you're not allowed to use that. That's the same situation in Europe, but also in other countries. So the thing is, if we want to really create a circular economy, we need to make sure that quality are the determining factor what is able to be used or not. And I, I would like to quote uh, the Professor Sutton that uh, was joining our panel this Sunday. He said, this is a totally crazy. And then he talked about the nitrogen, uh, and because the nitrogen, we have the same thing. If we take the nitrogen from the atmosphere with the uh, with incinerated natural gas, and then um, we can use it. But if we do that from the wastewater and do a huge environmental positive impact, we're not allowed to, to use it. So something needs to change, and very quickly, because we have huge carbon emissions that are laying on the table that need to change. So legislation are a key thing. And coming to legislation, uh, we also see that we need to change the perspective, how we see upon wastewater treatment plants. And, and uh, here we have together uh, in, at the Swedish Ministry of, of Industry in Sweden, and together with, with the Swedish Water, been introducing a new way of thinking, where uh, today's uh, line, linear processes, today's wastewater treatment plants in the future will become resource plants. So therefore, I'm very glad also now to introduce to you from Sweden, directly the CEO of Swedish Water, uh, Per Dahlheim, that will explain how important he sees that, that wastewater treatment plant will have a new role in the future. So please, Per, over to you and in Sweden. for delivering sustainable water services uh, is in a change. And it's, it's not only about the water. Um, a few other mass flows are as large as in the water and sewer sector. For example, Sweden manages uh, flows of one billion ton a year, which is uh, five times more than mining. However, the sector is in the move and our ambitions are high. I can see three strong trends, uh, and that is today's sewage is tomorrow's resources. Uh, today's treatment plants is to be converted to resource plants with production of phosphorus, but also biogas and reuse of, of nutrients and, and nitrogen. Uh, today's wastewater is for sure tomorrow's resources for industry and agriculture. So this is an opportunity that has to be taken now. Uh, I strongly believe that the water sector holds a number of benefits that goes beyond today's delivery, uh, such as water services, so to speak. Uh, the water sector can manage enormous mass floats uh, where to be used and utilized in other sectors. So I believe we, the water sector, do have the potential and the resources to be extracted. And I also believe that, that you, the industry, uh, innovation, the politicians, the legislators have the tool to facilitate the conditions to make this happen. So I for sure believe we can achieve a circle future today and tomorrow. And the time is now. Uh, for example, we need to, uh, to take for, uh, obligated quotas for, for reuse rather than new use. And that concerns phosphor as well, as you've uh, spoken out uh, 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 lately, uh, Pat and, and Jan. And Jan. Uh, strengthen and facilitate the movement uh, from wastewater treatment plants to resource plants. That includes technology, but also uh, legislation. Uh, that's the way to, to push uh, for, a, for a circle and sustainable product design. Uh, which also is important to to uh, prevent unwanted uh, substance, so to speak, in in the in the wastewater. So let us uh, continue the roads together through uh, through this and and towards a circle economy. Thank you, Par. Thank you so much, Par. And what you are talking about is very crucial here. You say that it's much more uh, masses that are running through today's wastewater treatment plant than the mining industry. So what we're talking about is, is urban mining for real. And this will be, be uh, uh, resources that will be going on forever. 
as long as there's human, there will be wastewater treatment plants or resource plants in the next to come. So thank you for that, Per, and uh, I think we'll do like this. We, we thank you, and we will then welcome from Germany, uh, Christoph Ontid from Gelsenwasser, but also Dina Stormberg from Bioforce in Copenhagen. And uh, I would like to have your reflections here. So please, if you can do a three minute presentation uh, uh, upon what you're doing, and then we will have a discussion here with John as well. So please start first, Joe Dines. Yes. Thank you very much. <coughs> uh, thank you very much, Pea. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just on live, okay. Yes, we, we start with Dines, and then we go for you, Christoph. Okay. Thank you, Pierre. I, um, yeah, I will just take my three minutes and Christoph can come on. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I would like to talk to you about what we're doing in Biofos. Uh, first of all, Biofos is the, uh, the utility that treats the wastewater in Copenhagen, about 1.2 million people in Copenhagen. Um, we are <clears throat> treating this in three wastewater treatment plants. And we are, of course, very uh, much occupied with the whole uh, circular economy and what, how we can transfer our plants into this. We are running one very big project uh, supported by the Danish state uh, called Varga. And you can see this on the Internet also, where we are working on several issues of the circular economy. One of them is to actually to extract the phosphorus out of the ash, which we are, find very interesting. And we, we follow closely uh, what is going on in easy mining, because that process, the ash to phosphorus process, is also very interesting. Uh, we have been uh, removing phosphorus in biofos from this from the wastewater uh, for many years since the 90s uh, when it was uh, the first legislated in Denmark and we uh, we have been removing it with by precipitation and also biologically uh, so we are we are taking the phosphorus into the sludge that is produced in the wastewater treatment plants and when we have uh, finished with the sludge so to speak we uh, we incinerate the sludge like they do in many countries uh, south of us in Germany and uh, in, in uh, Holland but we are the only ones in Denmark almost that, that are incinerating and in Scandinavia. But we have this, um, when we have incinerated all this sludge, we end up with, a, with the sludge ash. Uh, what you see behind me in the photo is one of the piles of sludge ash lying uh, at our treatment plants. Um, we have about 400,000 tons of ash uh, uh, lying in, in two uh, depots uh, at our treatment plants. And uh, this contains somewhere around 10% phosphorus. So it's a very big, uh, mine, you would say a bank of phosphorus. We call it our phosphorus bank. Uh, we hope we can uh, we can withdraw the phosphorus from this bank at one point. For instance, by with the technology that the Astrophos uh, is, we are uh, we are producing uh, on the running basis 8,000 tons of uh, ashes every year, and this is uh, the 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 material that's very well suited for a process like Astrophos. So we are hoping we are actually we are having a tender right now. We are we are we are sort of tendering our ashes to to different processes, and uh, we are we will see what comes on. And uh, I hope uh, that Astrophos will be one of the the bidders for for this task. I think that was about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dinas. Then we go to you, Christoph from uh, Gelsenwasser. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Per. No, no Edward. Thank you a lot. Uh, yes, uh, Gelsenwasser is a public utility company in Germany, owned by several cities. Uh, the core uh, discussion in Germany in the wastewater uh, system is, is not the nitrogen. It uh, are, are two, two main topics we do have. It's the uh, fourth uh, cleaning stage um, because we uh, try to remove uh, micro pollutants uh, or drug residuals because we have a lot of them in our surface waters. And this is a main discussion or a topic discussion in Germany. Uh, to build uh, such uh, fourth uh, stages in our uh, water treatment plants, wastewater treatment plants. And the second one is uh, the uh, sludge incineration. And, and uh, Gelsenwasser um, is uh, not even a wastewater company. It's also we do drinking water supply, wastewater disposal and energy supply in numerous cities in Germany. And so by this, the protection of natural resources is a very high priority for us. And that is why we have been campaigning against uh, the spreading of sewage sludge in water protection areas for many years. We welcome uh, the obligation to incinerate uh, sewage sludge in Germany and to recycle phosphorus. Uh, this is a, a, a rule in Germany that means uh, from 2029 on, uh, we have to do this, uh, to incinerate sewage sludge and recycle 
in order to reduce soil pollution and protect natural resources. In the Gelsmaster Group, we have numerous wastewater treatment plants with a total capacity of 4 million population equivalents. And at a very early stage, we look for resource saving methods, methods to recycle the sewage sludge from these treatment plants. We therefore decide to incinerate the sewage sludge in special plants and to recycle the ash of these plants. And Gelsenwasser is currently building two large sewage sludge incineration plants that will go into operation in the next two years. And the capacity of this plant is around 500,000 tons per year of dewatered sewage sludge. That means that about 50,000 tons per year of ash are produced to be recycled. So by this, we have searched for a long time and very intensively for a suitable process to recycle phosphorus from ash. And finally, we found the optimal partner in easy mining with the ash to phosphorus process. We are convinced that the ash to phosphorus process is the most suitable one. Therefore, we have entered into a partnership with easy mining and are currently planning the construction of a first plant in Germany. And we will talk about our joint project later in this session. So, so much for our view in this topic uh, just now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Christoph. Yeah, I do have a question about the concept. Obviously, instead of having uh, treat, uh, 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 wastewater treatment plants, have a concept of understanding that we mind shift change, we see that's a valuable resources. John Svart, you if you can reflect on both what Pyr said and both Dines and Christoph, and then we come back with Christoph and Dines to a, a reflection as well. Yeah, so it's very interesting to listen to you. And uh, thank you, Christoph, for your patience with the technology. It really worked out well from here, at least now. Uh, but uh, now, just to you a little bit, Dines, first. I mean, <coughs> virtually, you talked about this for many years now, of recycling of nutrients and uh, being it more of a resource and, and a business. What, what, what is it that takes a long time for you to develop this concept? What is the hindrances that you really would like to avoid now? I think there are, there are several barriers that we have to pass. Uh, we, we discuss, I mean, for, first of all, the, the legislation in, in uh, Denmark and other countries is uh, something that is a hindrance. You have to be able to do this. Our economy is quite uh, strict regulated, so we need to, uh, to prove to our board that it's a good idea to do it anyway, and we, we can find the money for it. And we need to, to legislation to, to actually be able to do it. Uh, and, and then, of course, we need to, we need to uh, find the market. That's what you are doing in, uh, in easy mining, uh, to, to try to find the market for the phosphorus and the silicate sand and so on. So the market is very important for, for this whole uh, circular economy that you actually, and you have to discuss whether, uh, is, it, is it something that has to be profitable? And, and what is profitable actually in this sense for, for a, a company like us? I mean, it costs money to treat wastewater. It has, it has always costed money. And I believe also that the circular economy has to cost something. It's okay that the, 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 I think the user, if you ask them, they will say, it's okay, we pay a little more for the water, uh, even though if, if we know that it's, it's, uh, it's going into circular economy. Okay, th thank you. And a little bit the same question to you, Christoph. I mean, uh, Germany has a legislation around phosphorus, uh, but is that enough? Uh, do you want more, or what? Is there other hindrances that you see? Uh, the, the challenge we have just now is uh, that the uh, legal requirement starts in 2029, and. Uh, to have then uh, big plants to treat um, resource uh, to, uh, to, to treat uh, the ash and uh, recycled phosphor needs to build the big uh, recycling plants years before, and uh, we are just now at this point that we try to start the first uh, demonstration plant in 2024 to have at the end in 29 a, a, a big plant to to uh, treat a, a big mass of this. But just now, uh, the challenge is uh, to get uh, municipalities and uh, uh, yeah, uh, incineration plants uh, to pay for this uh, early before the legal re requirement starts. Uh, mm -hmm. they, if they ask, if we ask them uh, to pay, uh, and and uh, we must say recycling costs money. Uh, and more money as it costs without recycling. So uh, if, if we're asking to pay a little bit more for uh, the recycling um, just before uh, starting the legal requirements, they, they say, oh, why should we do this before? Yeah. But, so this is 
just now our biggest challenge um yeah and and this is what we do just now and uh, but but we are convinced we find uh and and our discussions are very positive that uh, some municipalities uh yeah will be able to pay uh, this for for bringing their ash in our demonstration plan and some more progressive companies than uh, except for biofoss and gelsenwasser so fair over to you yeah thank you i think it's a, it's also a topic of the it, did we start with the egg or, the, or with the ham how did it start and uh, making sure that we can do it as soon as possible create circular loops are crucial Thank you so much, uh, Dinas uh, and Christophe. We will uh, have you back in the end. We'll discuss about uh, the future plans to come. Now we will turn into other source of uh, phosphorus. And here we now go to Denmark and we will invite both Lotte Wang from Jöring Municipality, head of the environmental section, but also Alan Olsen. He is uh, uh, the CEO of Green Gas. So please, uh, Lotte and Alan. Uh, we have you on both on the same screen. That's perfect. You're sitting together. Uh, so, Lotte, if you start first, what is uh, the municipality? What are your ambitions with uh, recirculation of nutrients when it comes to poultry, but also from the fish industry? So, please, go ahead. Thank you very much, Per, and uh, thank you for inviting us uh, for this uh, very interesting session. Um, in uh, Yang Municipality, we, we are very uh, preoccupied with the circular economy. We've been working uh, with circular economy for several years, and um, but in a smaller scale, and uh, we need to, to do a lot more of that. Um, we are very convinced that, um, that uh, the municipalities have an important Important role in uh, creating a circular economy, and um, let me give you some examples of that. Uh, we we have different roles, and um, often we uh, can work as facilitators and uh, matchmakers because we know the the companies in in our area. Often we are owners of uh, infrastructure, or we have an influence on supply facilities. Uh, we can be uh, potential partners, um, uh, <clears throat> seeing it from a, from a bias uh, perspective, and the public sector has a very large budget, uh, and we can uh, use the, the large budget to accelerate circular economy if we want to. Uh, then there can be uh, political aspects or, uh, or um, uh, challenges with legis legislation, and we can um, we can play a role there as well. Um, in the linear uh, economy, we sometimes forget that uh, that public and private sector uh, uh, that there are very uh, strong bonds between uh, them. But in the circular economy, I think that really reminds us that uh, that we need to to solve things together. Um, in this phosphorus case, um, we are uh, co-owners of um, of a waste incineration plant. And uh, when we're working on um, circular economy, there will be less waste for the for the incineration plant. And uh, if we can succeed in converting the plant uh, into uh, important infrastructure in the circular economy, I think we'll have um, solved more than one problem. So I totally agree with you, Per, when you say uh, these treatment plants should be uh, resource plants in the in the future. Um, another role is that uh, there are legislation uh, challenges. You already mentioned that um, when you uh, when you talk about um, uh, fuel structure. Um, and at the moment, we're working together with the uh, with the university, our local university, and several uh, ministries to uh, to find uh, ways forward. And uh, then in uh, Yuang, uh, we are a food and, uh, and farming uh, municipality, and uh, the agricultural sector uh, needs to be uh, part of the solution. Uh, we have a lot that we would uh, like to do with the, with the farmers in, uh, in partnership, uh, and um, the potential is enormous if we, uh, if we can, um, can uh, do it together. 
Thank you so much, Lothar. Uh, you almost say that I met many people within municipalities around the world, and many have a really high energy, but you are one of the ones that has most energy of all, so I really like your passion for creating those circular loops. We turn our now, now to Alan Olsen, and you will also have a PowerPoint and present uh, the background to the Nordic, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark in collaboration. So please go ahead, Alan. That's correct. Well, you showed a presentation, Pierre. Yeah. Thank you. So first of all, uh, again, thank you for, for letting us participate in this session. Uh, I will, rep I will uh, represent the, the project uh, the partners in this uh, collaboration. And the project partners are uh, Rangsels, a Norwegian company, Easy Mining, where Jan has already presented their technology. We are then uh, AVV, or, which is a waste treatment plant in Yang municipality. We work together with uh, Denhatch, uh, which where they produce poultry. Uh, I represent green gas or run gas, and we own and operate two biogas plants in, uh, in the northern part of Jutland. We then have the local farmers represented by Estal Hulgård. Uh, and we have uh, Biomass, uh, which is a company part owned by Grongas. Uh, and they work within the uh, sourcing of biomasses to biogas plants in Denmark. In a broad perspective, we, we they, they source around 35 Danish biogas plants uh, with biomasses. We then have uh, Young Kommune, or Young Municipality, and we have a lot of uh, universities and consultants uh, working within the project as well uh, to do the documentation on uh, on the project and uh, the technology that we that we test. So we have the University of Aalborg, the University of Copenhagen, uh, Institute of Technology, and uh, SIGIS, which is an uh, agricultural uh, research and development uh, company. Could you show the next slide? Thank you. So this is actually the circular economy or the, the, yes, the circular economy in, in our project. And if we start in the, the top right corner, uh, you can see the, 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 the beginning of the, of the source or the, the resources where we have both uh, aquaculture and agriculture. Uh, and we have uh, the leftovers from, uh, from production from aquaculture and, and agriculture, which is what we use in, in the biogas industry, uh, the slurry from both of these productions, we can then put into the biogas plant where we can produce energy uh, from, uh, from the resources or from the, the leftovers. And when we collect all of these biomasses, we can then, uh, the degas slurry that we have as a leftover from the biogas plant, we are able to uh, extract fibers, slurry fibers from this degas slurry and we can take this, uh, these fibers and transport them to AVV, uh, who can then incinerate them. Uh, whereas, as we've heard from, from other projects uh, where we do uh, or where you do waste treatments, uh, we then incinerate the slurry fibers and end up with ashes that we can send to Easy Mining, who can then extract phosphorus from the ashes. And the phosphate sources from, from um, from easy mining can then be built into to the feed industry or be used in, in, in animal feeds again, where we then close the, the circle. So it's a, it's a full on circular economy. Uh, could you show the next one? Yeah. Yes. Uh, just uh, skip that one. Uh, we'll just take the next one. Yeah. So why are we in, in, in this or a part in, in this project? Well, as a biogas plant, on one side, it is to secure our biomasses for growth in, uh, in the biogas industry in Denmark. And in doing so, we also help solve a, a resource or a waste problem in, in Norwegian agriculture. On the other side, it is to, to try and help uh, to solve a global challenge uh, related to phosphate or phosphorus. And we aim to, to recycle large amount of phosphate for feed usage. And, and, and in doing so, to decrease the surplus of phosphate in Danish agriculture, uh, where we use the, the phosphate for, for crops. Um, so our goal is overall to recycle phosphate, uh, phosphate from well-known agri and aquaculture sources, both in Denmark and, and in Norway, and reuse it for feed, uh, which is the highest quality you can use uh, phosphate in a, in a, in a resource uh, mindset. 
Uh, so the result so far has been uh, very promising, and they've shown that uh, the combined uh, value chain and the technology used uh, really has the potential to be part of the future solution to recycle phosphate. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, this interesting uh, project means that we can recirculate phosphorus from sources in Norway from sources in Denmark and then transport it to Helsingborg. And that's the sort of southern part of Sweden where we will build our first plant. We will come back to that and, uh, because I would like now to introduce the Minister of Agriculture from Denmark, it's Rasmus Preen, that will do a statement where he talks about the importance of cr closing nutrient loops. So please, Minister, from the pre-recorded video. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for the opportunity to say a few words on why I believe that your session on phosphorus is an important and urgent matter. Phosphorus is an essential building block for life. Phosphorus is at the same time a scarce resource as an input for farming. But it is also a potential source of pollution. It is therefore absolutely crucial for the green transition that we manage to recycle valuable resources like phosphorus. We live in a world where 2 billion people do not have regular access to safe, nutritious and sufficient food. At the same time, we have to reduce the impact of our food systems on the climate the environment and biodiversity. Sustainable use of phosphorus is one of the key challenges for the global food system. We need a wide range of actions to tackle the challenges that we face. And we need a wide range of stakeholders, public and private, to take action now. The challenges of the food system differ from country to country. In Denmark, we have a surplus of nutrients such as phosphorus, but it is not always available and often in a poor quality. I am very interested in exploring the opportunities of advanced technologies. Also, when it comes to recycling phosphorus, it is with great interest that I have been following the initiatives taken by the municipality of Jørgen and other Nordic stakeholders. I believe their ambitions are great and I am extremely grateful that you take the time and effort to explore these opportunities further. But there are challenges. Let me give an example. The use of waste material is heavily regulated within the EU. This is for a good reason. We must not compromise food safety and the health of animals and humans. But we also have the obligation to strive towards a more sustainable use of resources. Therefore, we must take the opportunities that new technologies provide. If it is possible to recirculate phosphorus in a sufficiently high quality, then we must ask ourselves if we can afford not to explore this opportunity further. There are no easy solutions. Therefore, let us collaborate to turn this global challenge into an opportunity for ourselves and for the generations to come. With these words, I wish you a very fruitful session on this very important matter. I look forward to hearing about your conclusions and the actions that you recommend. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, dear Minister. Strong words, and we really like to work together with you and with the Norwegian counterpart and with the Swedish counterpart, because this is really a Nordic mission that we are on to. 
but not just Nordic, because we talk about hundreds of places around the world where there we have the same situation, meaning that we are facing challenges uh, when nutrients are leaking out into the oceans. I think that Professor Rockstra mentioned maybe hundreds of places around the world. So this can be, a, be an example for how you can do it in many places and make sure that we can really create circular loops that also are causing positive impacts for other parts in the other environment. Let's now go back to the plants in itself. And here I would like to now invite a new speaker and an old speaker. We will also, of course, bring back Christoph Ontid from Gelsenwasser, but also the CEO of Kemira in Helsingborg, Mr. Peter Schielgren. So, uh, and uh, Peter, you will also have your three minutes to explain what is Chimera and why are, are Helsingborg as such a big, good place for a phosphorus plant from uh, Easy Mining? Thank you very much for the uh, uh, introduction and for letting me having uh, my three minutes here. Chimera is a global leader in the sustainable chemical solutions for the water intensive industry. and. Uh, this also includes uh, circular economy and industrial symbiosis in, in many aspects. Uh, I just want to like, I'd like to state to you all that Chimera is uh, committed to the UN global targets in terms of uh, sustainability. And this is, of course, a part of our entire business not only the primary business in producing and, and offering chemical solutions to our customers, but also in utilizing our own resources in a very, uh, let's say, uh, clever way, uh, sharing what we can share. And I would like to just quote one of our uh, sustainability slides from a very early uh, presentation we had internally saying that the global growing global population and the scarcity of resources need uh, to we need to increase the demand of doing more with less and i think this is exactly what it is for us we're not part of the actual phosphorus um, uh, recovery but we would offer uh, our uh, site our uh, av ability to uh, erect such a plant uh, with a uh, focus on circular economy and uh, industrial symbiosis. This is nothing new to us. Uh, we have been doing this long before these words were used in this context, but uh, not the least by pro providing uh, energy, uh, CO2 free energy to the uh, city of Helsingborg as district heating. About 40% come from recovered energy. And this is what we are good at at the site. We have access. Um, uh, amounts of, of utilities, of energy. We have an infrastructure that is really well good uh, for this purpose. And we, of course, also have the many of the chemicals uh, needed for this process, uh, which could be provided in a pipeline to a plant like this. Uh, furthermore, uh, the excellence may be a bit of luck, but still uh, a way of the discussion we've had with the East Mining is, of course, we have a process building that we are not, which is no longer in use and which could be used for this purpose. So uh, this is very, a very good example of how we can do more with less. And this is what we all are talking about. This is a side effect, in my opinion, because the primary uh, purpose for the, the plant uh, erected by easy mining which will be erected uh, by easy mining is of course this phosphorus uh, recovery but adding all these other advantages i think this could be a very good example of how we can do good for the planet and also contribute uh, to uh, the sustainability development and i would like to say that the industry is very much the enabler here we have the solutions, we need the support of politics, we need the support of uh, the legislation, we need the support from very many uh, places to, to make this movement move as quick as possible. I will stop there, so thank you very much for my three minutes. Thank you. We are uh, in now in the environmental permit process for the both uh, sites, both in Helsingborg and also in Germany, in the partnership with Gelsenwasser. And of course, this is a very important uh, thing. We heard the Minister of, of Agriculture, Freyr from Denmark, say that this is really something that is crucial uh, when it comes to Helsingborg, that is extra important, we can really make it happen as well. 
But I would like you to elaborate on that. What, what is now the process and what is the important when it comes to creating those partnerships? Because that, I think, is a key uh, question going forward. And Jan, if you would like to start. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. It's a, partnerships are extremely important here. And if you looked before on the list of the Danish initiative that goes to Norway and to Sweden, this is a long list of partners that you need to have. And the same goes for all of these projects. And, and Kimira was not even mentioned on that list, so uh, it should maybe be. <laughs> uh, I can live with it. <laughs> and, and, uh, so, and I think that goes for circular economy. I always say that it's, uh, this is the fun and the complicated part with circular economy because you, know, you need to be expert in so many things. Before it was a straight line and you needed to take your part of it. Now you're part of a circle. Much more complicated, also much more fun. But you really need to have partners that you can collaborate with. Okay, Christoph, what is your view, um, both on when it comes to the, what Peter has said, but also John, when it comes to partnership, and of course the process now for setting up the first plant also in, uh, in partnership with you? From uh, our view, I can say it's very important at first to get the the, uh, the uh, optimal partner for the technology uh, because it, it only works if you, if you have a, a good uh, process. And we think this is, uh, we did at first that we are just now partners, Easy Mining and, and Gelsenmaster in Germany. And the second one is, of course, uh, uh, we need a lot of partners. Uh, at first, we, we need partners uh, which uh, sell us their or, or give us their ash and give money for this. Yeah, I, I talked about it earlier in, in this session. The second one is uh, about the products. We, we need a lot of partners. There are a lot of products uh, of, of this very good uh, ash to force process. Uh, but uh, to get this uh, very high recycling quote of more than 95%, we need uh, several partners, uh, uh, recipients of the product. And, and this is the challenge we do just right now um, to get a lot of them and, and we had a very good discussion. So I, I think we find uh, recipients for these products. Um, we discuss uh, with the concrete industry about the sand which comes out of the process and the concrete industry uh, in Germany and I can say worldwide uh, is just now on the way uh, to reduce, uh, reduce uh, the, the, the CO2 and, and they, uh, yeah, they must change their processes. They, are, uh, they need very much high energy to um, produce concrete. So they uh, are very interested to get uh, some green products um, to, to uh, save CO2. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities in this discussion. And, and, and they are, I'm look, looking forward that we get uh, the partners we need to start this process in Germany. Uh Christoph, you're talking about uh, the, the silica. And the thing is that we are not just extracting phosphorus with our process. We can separate all, all by, uh, things that are in, in, the, in, the, in the ash after incineration. And the silica, we have worked with, uh, with the Technical University of Copenhagen, and we have proven that it can be possible to replace cement uh, in concrete production. And here we talk, of course, about also a huge carbon saver as well. But to be honest, we can replace, we can recirculate almost everything. There's just 0.7% that are the heavy metals that we also now have been talking, started to discuss with how we can separate those with, an, with, a, with a huge metal company that really are good in, in separating them. And then we have the copper, of course, that can be brought back. So this is an example of a true circular process that will be crucial going forward. Any last comments from you, Jan, before we take in the politicians to comment? No, I, I think it's encouraging. And then, of course, as you say, this infrastructure, its products and its process. So uh, we need all the different parts of the cycle. Any last comments from Peter or Christoph? We start with you, Peter. Uh, I, I totally agree with everything that was said, and I think that the minister, the Danish minister, said something that is very important. I think that he said that we have an obligation to do something, and I think this is something that every all the stakeholders need to keep in mind, even the legislators and uh, everybody in the system. So if you keep that in mind, I think we can make things happen. I give the last word to you, Christoph. Yeah, uh, what uh, just very, very positive is just in this moment is the discussion with the authorities. Uh, 
We are just now in the uh, permit discussions, and uh, it seems to be very, very easy. Uh, the authorities are very open uh, to give us uh, the permit, uh, the permission for building this plant, and this is uh, yeah, very positive, I think. So you in Sweden, listen what's happening in Germany. It's very easy to get the permits. <laughs> Looking forward. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Peter, and thank you so much, Christoph. And now we will turn to uh, Helsingborg and John Björklund. You are the deputy mayor of the city of Helsingborg. And in Italy, they used to say that all roads turns to Rome. But now it looks like all, all roads seems to turn to Helsingborg instead. So I would like to have your comments and uh, why are it so, why is it important for the city? <coughs> I have, I'm sorry, I have um, a vocal cord inflammation and I have sent a message in the chat to, um, uh, to Andrea, uh, so perhaps uh, it can read up uh, my message. Probably we'll check if we can read it up. We, we do like that then. We start first with uh, make sure that we have um, uh, possible to, make, to have it been read up from the deputy mayor. So we start with Emma Weisner. She is the member of the European Parliament in, in, uh, in, uh, in Brussels and she is member uh, she is representing Sweden, or she is representing herself there, but she is from Sweden. So, Emma Weisner, uh, you are not here, but we have pre-recorded you from this stage. So you are speaking from, from, from uh, the Nordic Minister Council stage. So please, Emma, start first. evident that we're moving away from a linear economy into a circular economy, meaning we have to close all the loops that we can and really make sure that we're moving away from linear policies, linear systems and linear way of thinking, linear uh, industrial logic going into circular. And that means that more and more facilities will become recycling facilities and also moving away from waste as a concept rather being a resource. So I think that is what's going on uh, right now, the industrial transformation that we are in the middle of, going away from linear, going into circular. When it comes to circulation of nutrients, I think it's absolutely critical, not only from an agriculture point of view, it's from a soil point of view, from industrial, a resource management point of view, we need to be better at circulating all our nutrition uh, for healthy ecosystems, healthy soils, healthy earth and grounds, uh, but also, I mean, taking care of all the resources that we have, um, that is today traditional waste, now becoming more and more resources and the higher value. I think it's amazing how we can push from a Swedish perspective on resource, uh, research and innovation. We have the economic muscles and the, the possibilities and the companies and the level of innovation needed uh, in order to really be front runners when it comes to research and innovation. And I think from a circular economy point of view, we should go even faster, run even faster uh, in the front to change, change and drive uh, a circular transformation. Thank you so much, Emma. And I think we'll now bring up Johnny again on the picture, but I will read. Uh, and uh, we met here for, I think it was a month ago, and uh, then, then it was really very inspiring to meet you and also the, the, the county, the county of Skåne. So I will read now directly what, what you have written. For Helsingborg, this is an important investment. It is important that we are at the forefront of innovative solutions for climate change and the continued investment in new industrialization of Sweden. And I agree, you will be on the forefront with this investment because the world are looking on the how to recirculate nutrients. So with that, thank you so much, Jan, and I wish you a nice recovery and thank you for participating anyhow. So uh, by that, we will now end from the stage of the Nordic Ministers Council. But I would like to, of course, have some words with you, Jan. What do you say about this session and uh, what you have heard? Yeah, I, I think uh, the Danish minister was very inspiring. I think he said the right things. I, what you really have to remember that it's uh, phosphorus is a finite raw material. So you take it up from the ground and earth, you know, and then you spread it away and waste it. And it will be so diluted so it can never be recovered if you don't have a purposely built recovery system. I think this is, uh, this is maybe 
the key learning that this has to be built up and maybe even before all legislation is in place. So companies, I think, that doesn't wait until in 2029 in Germany or actually start earlier like Elsenwasser, they will have a heads up and a you know, earlier start. And the same with Biofoss that we saw here. Rangsels is a company we were founded or originated from 140 years back. We have transformed several times, changing direction somehow, but in the core of the company has always been agriculture, the land. Phosphorus was something that we started with already back in 1881. Then we brought back latrines, uh, and then it was the horses that, that did the work. Now we are on the forefront to make it possible, not just locally, but globally. So this innovation has a global potential for the future. 2024, you talk about the two first factories, one in Sweden and one in Denmark. But then all mega cities around the world will face the same problem. So uh, if you're interested, um, Easy Mining works with urban mining and uh, making sure that resources can be used over and over again. So please contact us if you want to have any more questions. We'll definitely be able to answer it to you. And uh, over and out here from uh, Glasgow and the Nordic Ministers Council stage. Thank you so much, Jon, and thank you so much, uh, viewers here at Glasgow, and thank you so much, your viewers online also. Thank you very much.